it's been a long couple of days dealing with what's currently going on with this uh, Fox News guy. But I took a phone call last night, big mistake, from an officer. Go ahead and say it. Yes, yes. It was an Army officer. Go ahead and say it again. Uh, who told me he had served in Vietnam and that his neighbor uh, boasts, brags, he's a big loudmouth neighborhood bully about classified, uh, being a classified Navy SEAL in Vietnam. And I did my best with that guy to just dispel all that. When somebody tells you it's classified, I don't know how many times I got to go into this shit. It's, it's a lie. It's a lie for a thousand different reasons and I could go over every one of them. Operations are classified. Guys are not. It's no men in black out there. There's no benefits if you have that. There's no, no nothing. It's bullshit. Total bullshit. And I told him that and he started arguing with me. And he goes, well, I know for a fact he served in the Tet Offensive in Vietnam. And I said, well, how do you know that, sir? And he said, well, he, he told me. And I said, he told you? This is the guy that told you it was classified. Now you're taking the Tet Offensive as fact? And he said, well... He's got Bronze Star license plates. And I went, oh my God. Officer, Army, enough of that. It's so easy to fraud all this shit up. It's just getting terrible today. It's exhausting as how much work I've done over the years exposing these fake SEAL claims and they still somehow seem to get away with it. But you know, what else do I got to do? Not much. So I'm going to give you guys, because you've been really, really cool, uh, I'm going to give you guys an update on the Fox News phony steal. I normally, because I'm just very cool and very good looking, I normally get a guy's records back the same day I ask for them. Uh, but those two gals down there were both out of the office. Uh, well, I got them this morning. Thank God, they're very apologetic too, but uh, just two of the sweetest girls down there. And they put me at the head of the line because I do important shit. If you remember from the video, this uh, John Gallofallo, Garofalo, whatever that his name is, talked about these 20 combat awards, his time served in Vietnam, uh, being a SEAL, losing friends, crying on the camera. And it was all bullshit. All of it was bullshit. He made all of it up. He served from uh, 63 to 67. He served a total of four years in one day. Uh, his first duty assignment after uh, he was an aviation bosun mate handler, which means he secures aircraft to runways and does FOD walkdowns every day. He got out as an E-4. That's it. He was at Oceana for two years after boot camp, and then he went to Rota, Spain for two years, and then he was discharged. That's it. He spent 20 months in Rota, Spain. That's the closest that guy got to Vietnam. You guys have watched any of my videos before with the, the shit I uncover with these phonies and what they claim and what's actually true. You should have no problems believing that because, I mean, I got it. I got all of it. Uh, the only award he received was a National Defense Service Medal. That's it. His stories about Purple Hearts, combat air crewmen, uh, explosive ordnance disposal, SEAL, parachuting, losing his buddies was just all total bullshit. The only buddy he ever lost was on Liberty one night when they were drunk and got separated and rode to Spain or some shit. That's it. He applied to the Navy in 1993 to get Vietnam awards entered into his service record. And the Navy denied it. They did a complete review and said, you were never assigned to any unit or ship that uh, rated any Vietnam awards. Tried to buffalo the Navy, they denied it. National Defense Service Medal is the only block they checked because he was in the Navy during the time of the Vietnam uh, War. There is a major bloodletting uh, on the internet uh, wanting to go after this guy, and I've tried to keep that calm. It's much better for the professionals. Uh, so what I've done 
is I have pleaded with that reporter who just, uh, the guy that wrote that story, just without pushing, pleading, I'm trying to help the guy. I was trying to help him at the start. I have a soft spot for reporters who get lied to and duped. You know, and that's how you learn to be a good journalist is you get your pipe packed by a couple of these guys that lie on those stories and you've got to retract them. It's embarrassing and credibility. His problem is he is not retracting this story. He's toying with me. He is relying on the it's classified thing, his uh, family had told them. His records are all classified. And then he comes back out and he says that uh, they say all his records were destroyed in the St. Louis fire in 1973. That's a common one uh, phonies tell. There was a fire at the Records Center in St. Louis in 1973. It destroyed a hell of a lot of Army records. It destroyed some Air Force records. It never touched a Marine Corps one. It never touched a Navy one. And that is a matter of uh, record. If you get on uh, the Internet and you Google uh, Records Center Fire St. Louis 1973, you'll see... Uh, a, B, C, you know, who was affected alphabetically in those and that no Navy records were touched, but these phonies fall back on that. I think he is uh, in too deep into this story now, and he thinks if he just ignores me like a lot of these guys do, that I'll just go away, and I won't. I've offered him help, but uh, he really blew me off today. I told him I had the records. I basically told him what was in them. Uh, because he had come back with, well, the only thing in question is uh, the SEAL thing. Uh, he has proof that he served in Vietnam. Well, guess what? He lied to you about that, too. Terrible. And so when he finally came back that uh, I told him I had the records and what they were in, he told me, uh, wrote me, and said, well, I'll talk to you after I get my records back from St. Louis. Okay, cool. I think the last time I checked the uh, Fox News site uh, for that video, it had 15 million likes and some insane amount of shares, and just it's just viral. And I'm not going to let that happen. And for that guy to get up there and sell that line of shit, uh, just is driving a lot of guys really nutty. There's a lot of guys that all saw that story. And I'm apparently the first guy to be able to get his records back like that that quickly. I'm holding all this stuff. Uh, and I've, I've turned it over to uh, ABC News now. I don't know if I told you that before. And we'll see what they want to do with it. If not, it'll go to Inside Edition. I've done Dateline, Nightline, all that stuff, Anderson, Cooper, and, and somebody's going to bite off on this. I think it's better to let the pros go and go after this guy. I will if I have to, but let the media do it. They do a very good job, very professional job, the editing, the quality of the film, all that. And yeah, do that. And that's your update. And of course, it should come as no surprise what that guy. He lied about all of it. He forged, forged, forged records, big, big time, and gave that to the uh, media. That was his proof that he was a SEAL in Vietnam. Here it is right here. White out in Photoshop, man. So I appreciate the uh, the help. More to follow. I'll get into this. I'm uh, busy firing this off all over the place. So uh, thanks for all the help. And thanks for all you guys uh, contacting me about the uh, Photoshopping thing. I will get back to all of you. It has been an insanely busy day. And I can't thank you guys enough for all the uh, support. There just ain't enough hours in the day sometimes for all this shit, man. Hi, Eric. Well, John Garofalo says he knew President Trump would win the moment he announced his campaign. And despite health issues, the veteran worked tirelessly to create a gift for a man that's given him hope. The man, uh, he, he woke something up in me. Uh... He's for the people. John Garofalo believes in President Trump, so much so he created this hand-cut, four-foot, 150-pound glass and bronze presidential seal of the United States as a gift for the president. A lot of love went into that, you know, of the country and of the people, the soldiers, the president.
This isn't the first seal he made. The 72-year-old has been carving glass for 44 years. In fact, he gifted two for President George H.W. Bush and President Ronald Reagan. Why Reagan, he put the pride back into the servicemen. Garofalo says after 24 years, he was inspired to make his best seal yet for Trump. I have hope for him and I have hope for the country. Carving glass and bronze can take months of painstaking work. It begins with a simple drawing and then ends with Garofalo suited up and carving his art. One mistake, the piece is gone. Garofalo is used to working under pressure. The Vietnam War veteran served seven years as a member of the nation's first Navy SEAL team. He was awarded 22 commendations, including two Purple Hearts. You are a hero, but like most heroes, I don't like to hear like, that. You don't like to hear it. <laughs> Why don't you like to hear it? Here was all the ones that didn't come home. Garofalo says the seal is a reminder of how great America is. The honor in the country, the honor what this country stands for. Now, presidents receive thousands of letters and offers of gifts every year. And for John, it's now a waiting game. He sent a letter and a booklet to the White House in September, and he's hoping President Trump will accept this seal. Now, Eric, by the way, this is a tough tough man. He was listed twice during his service in Vietnam as missing in action. Wow. He's a seventh degree black belt. And honestly, part of the reason why he voted for Trump is because as a self-made glass artist, he's been having a tough time uh, just running a business. And he's hoping that President Trump will make the environment out there better for him to succeed. Even at 72, he has no plans at stopping of being a glass artist. Wow, he's just spectacular. God bless John Garofalo, and we certainly hope uh, maybe the president is listening. Uh, those at the White House, he's making it. Just give him a call. Call Brian. I and, think and the president will accept it. Put him in touch it. with uh, Mr. Garofalo. No doubt.